Welcome, get your Bibles ready, and in a few minutes, we'll be studying together another portion of God's Word. Also have your communion supplies ready for the Lord's Supper. Now let's praise God in song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings of this life and the promise of eternal life with you in heaven. We pray for the leaders of our country and leaders worldwide that peace and your truth would be accepted. Help us during this difficult time as we deal with this worldwide health crisis. Father, be with those who are sick and hurting or have lost loved ones. And Father, we especially pray for those who are spiritually sick and dying. Be with our missionaries worldwide. Thank you for the cure for sin, the blood of your Son given for us. Thank you for the blood-bought church, your own family. Lord, when we sin, may our conscience ache, and may we always ask you to forgive. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty sod and to become the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified. They laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died. But you have brought me to your side To be led by your staff and rod And to be called the Lamb of God O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God I love the me in his precious blood till I am just the Lamb of God. Our Heavenly Father, glory and honor be unto you. Thank you for providing salvation for us, redemption from our sins. Thank you for your plan of salvation involving Jesus from before the world began. 
Bless this bread as we partake as a symbol of our Lord's body that He offered up, suffering in our place, and help our minds to think back to His suffering and His shame that we brought upon Him because of our sin. Help us to examine our lives now and partake, remembering His body as we eat this bread as a memorial showing His death until He comes again. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We continue in prayer, Father, remembering the shedding of Christ's innocent blood from the whip that tore his flesh, the crown of thorns pressed upon his head, from the nails driven into his hands and feet, and from the spear that thrust into his side. Help us to think back to his suffering, the shedding of his blood to purchase our salvation. Help us examine our lives so that we are living as we have been purchased not selfishly. And Father, we pray that you have blessed this cup as we partake, remembering his blood by which we are saved, showing his death until he comes again. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go, anywhere he leads me in this world below, anywhere without and dearest joys would fade, anywhere with Jesus I am not afraid, anywhere, anywhere fear I cannot know, anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus I am not alone, other friends may fail me, he is still my own. Though his hand may lead me over drearest ways, anywhere with Jesus is a house of praise. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know, anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus over land and sea, Telling souls in darkness of salvation free, Ready as he summons me to go or stay, Anywhere with Jesus when he points the way, Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know, Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere 
with Jesus I can go to sleep when the darkening shadows round about me creep, knowing I shall wake and never more to roam. Anywhere with Jesus will be home, sweet home. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Thank you for joining us. Our topic today is Jesus Calms the Stormy Sea. And we'll be taking our lesson from three different texts, from Matthew chapter 8, from Mark chapter 4, and Luke chapter 8. Uh, we know that Jesus entered into a ship with his disciples, and there arose a great storm on the sea. And the scriptures tell us that the storm was so great that the ship was even covered by the waves. But an amazing thing is in the text. It says, but Jesus was asleep, but he was asleep there in the ship. How could he sleep during such a great storm? Uh, the, the boat tossing about as it must have been in the waves. How could you possibly sleep there? And of course, he probably was exhausted from the travels and the, the pressure that the crowd was putting on him. But uh, I believe there's another reason that he had great peace there enough to, to go to sleep. Another question is, what is this peace that passes our understanding? What is this peace that Jesus had that enabled him to sleep there during the storm that sometimes we don't understand? The disciples uh, in the boat with him did not understand the peace that he had. They woke him up saying, Lord, save us, we perish. So they did not have that great peace that he, that he obviously had. He was not afraid. And let's consider uh, in the lesson today, uh, why should Jesus fear the storm? Why should he fear the storm? There's really no reason whatsoever. <clears throat> Let's look at uh, actually a two-part lesson, and part number one will be the power of Christ over the physical world. And of course, the wind and the waves is, uh, is what we're talking about here, the water and the sea, and that he had power over these things in the physical world. Let's go back to the very beginning, the, our beginning the, of creation. In the beginning, when the, earth, when the earth was without form, and without form just means there's no uh, solid ground. Uh, it was void, uh, unusable, uh, empty, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. So if you imagine this muddy uh, void where the elements of creation were being prepared by, by God. And uh, imagine that mud, let's just think of it as mud, unusable uh, earth. Now, if we just for a moment jump to John chapter nine, let's, uh, let's think about mud in a different way. Uh, Jesus met a man who had been blind from birth it says he spat upon the ground and he made clay of the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay or, or this would be mud. And he said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. And the blind man went there and he washed and came back seeing with his sight. When Jesus bent over to mix the clay for the blind man's eyes, do you wonder if he thought back? Did he think back to when the earth was a muddy void in creation, when he was there uh, creating the things for us on the earth? Did he think back to when he helped create Adam, making him out of the same material uh, as well? If he could make a man out of clay, what a simple job it would be to simply make a muddy remedy for a blind man's eyes. Think about that, how simple a task that was for him to do. 
Let's go back to the beginning in John 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now that Word there is Jesus Christ. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So he was included in the creation of all things, not, with no exception whatsoever. Then if we read in Colossians 1, verse 16, it says, For by him all things created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. He is eternal, in other words. And by him all things consist. Now let's think about that word consist there. It comes from a Greek word that means all things are held together. They're bound together. So in him or by him, all things of creation are bound together. The elements are bound together by him or held together. Who bound together two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen to make water? How are they bound together? Well, the creator did that. He did. He bound them together. On the boat, on the stormy sea, what were the men afraid of? Water. They were afraid of water. Well, who created water? Who bound the hydrogen and oxygen elements together? It was Jesus Christ, creator. And he had the peace that passes understanding to go into the boat and go to sleep during the storm. Consider the elements, the building blocks of our world. A man has discovered about 116 elements. Uh, they are found on the periodic table of elements. And it is a scientific fact that man cannot destroy an element. He can only convert it. An example of this is water. Water can be a liquid. We cannot destroy it, though. If we heat it up, it will be turned into a gas. It's still not destroyed. If we take water and we, we uh, make it cold enough, it will freeze and become ice, but we still have not destroyed the water. We cannot destroy it at all. Man cannot even destroy a single drop of water. It's amazing. God, God has put the proof in our hands that we cannot destroy anything that God has made. But the elements will be destroyed one day by the one who created them. In Hebrews 1 verse 10, it says, Lord, in the beginning thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remain. They shall all grow old as does a garment, and thou shalt fold them up, and they shall be changed. In 2 Peter 3, verse 10, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, unexpectedly, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements, the elements now, shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Not just burned, but burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. There's the word dissolved to uh, make the point even further. Then what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the element shall melt with fervent heat. It's very clear here that everything will be gone. There will be no remnant of the earth whatsoever. The word elements here uh, that we just read from the Greek meaning a first thing. Elements, the first thing. So when it says the elements shall melt with fervent heat, it is a thing from which all other things have come. The elements, hydrogen, oxygen, all those things will be gone, no remnant at all. There won't be any ashes left behind when God melts the elements. 
The elements are under the control of God's uh, physical laws, and that is uh, apparent here on the earth. In heaven, there won't be those physical laws in place, so how amazing heaven will be, because there, there will be not necessarily any of these laws in, in use. The laws of gravity, the laws of mathematics, physics, laws of thermodynamics, and still laws that we have not discovered yet that apply to this earth. These are the sciences of matter, energy, motion, inertia, structure, space, change, and their interactions with one another. The things that Einstein wrestled with, the things that scientists today are still trying to understand are the basic things of creation. Well, back to the stormy sea. <clears throat> Jesus knew the water's elemental compound. He had put it together. He had bound together hydrogen and oxygen that composed water. And he knew all about water. He was able to walk on the water. And he knew that one day he would be part of the destruction of that water at the end of time. No wonder the wind and the waves obeyed his will. No wonder that when he spoke to them, they complied to the master, to the creator. When he said, peace be still, they obeyed. He spoke them into stillness just as he spoke them into existence at the time of creation. He rebuked the wind and he spoke to the sea and the sea and the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And wouldn't you imagine that when the creator tells uh, the wind and the waves to be still, that that was the calmest that water had ever been. It must have been a lake that looked like a mirror. Now, that's part one, the power of Christ over the physical world. Part two is the power of Christ over the, the spiritual world. Jesus had power over demons. Uh, Mark 5 or 7, a demon cried out, recognizing him for who he was, and he said, Jesus, thou son of the most high God. In Matthew 26, verse 53, it states that Jesus was able to call more than 12 legions of angels to come to his service. In Matthew chapter 9, the man was sick of palsy and he not only healed him, but he forgave him of his sins. Now he's also not just over the physical world, healing the man, but he's over the spiritual world, forgiving him of his sins. It was as easy for him to forgive this man of his sin as it was to heal him from palsy, just as easy. It was easy for him to command the spiritual world as it was for him to command the physical world. So Jesus was there, in the beginning, the creator of the physical world, but he also created the spiritual world. Jesus had, had already been there creating our spiritual world before the foundation of the physical world. Jesus was the sacrificial lamb slain since the foundation of the world, Revelation 13, verse 8. Jesus was the spotless lamb foreordained before the foundation of the world. 1 Peter 1, verse 19. Paul wrote to Timothy, putting it this way, in 2 Timothy 1, 9, God hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, which was given to us in Jesus Christ before the world began. You see, our, our salvation, our calling, existed before the world even began. What a wonderful creator and provider we have. What power behind the words, peace be still. It was spoken by the one who has the peace that passes our understanding, spoken by the one who can give peace in the physical world and peace to us in the spiritual world as well. What a great peace he offers. We need to imitate the wind and the waves. We need to be like them. They obeyed his will. All he had to say was peace, be still. 
Obedience means that we can enjoy a great calm as they did. The peace of God which passes understanding can keep our hearts and our minds through Jesus Christ. So Jesus said, peace be still, be still. We need to be still in order to have peace. In the fast paced world, we need times of peace and quiet meditation and study and prayer. Psalm 46 tells us to be still and know that he is God. Be still. Sometimes peace begins with just being still. <clears throat> well, preacher, that sounds good to me, but the storms of life are raging. Waves of problems are tossing high. My sky is overshadowed with blackness and no shelter or help is nigh. <clears throat> Lord, carest thou not that, we, that I perish? How can you lie there asleep when each moment so madly is threatening a grave in the angry deep? Master, with anguish of spirit I bow in my grief today, the depths of my sad heart are troubled. Awaken and save, I pray. Torrents of sin and of anguish sweep over my sinking soul. And I perish, I perish, dear master. O oh, hasten and take control. The winds and the waves shall obey his will. Peace be still. Whether the wrath of the storm-tossed sea or demons or men or whatever it be, no water can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. They all shall sweetly Obey his will. Peace be still. So master, the terror is, is now over and the elements sweetly rest. Earth's sun in the calm lake is mirrored and heavens within my breast. Linger, O oh blessed redeemer. Leave me alone no more. And with joy I shall make the blessed harbor and rest on the blissful shore. Is there a storm in your life today? Won't you come to the master for peace? Peace be still. Believe in Jesus Christ as the son of God and confess him before men. Repent of your sins, turning from them and obey Jesus Christ. Be baptized in water and to reenact the gospel, the death, burial and resurrection of our savior. Having your sins there washed away, live faithful for the rest of your life asking for forgiveness when you stumble and staying on the pathway of righteousness in the walking in the light and receive a heavenly home one great day. Thanks for joining us. Jesus, save your pilot me over life's tempestuous sea unknown waves before me roll Hiding rock and treacherous shoal, chart and compass came from thee. Jesus, save your pilot me. As a mother stills her child, thou canst touch the ocean wild. Boisterous waves obey thy will. When thou sayest to them be still, wondrous sovereign of the sea, Jesus, Savior, pilot me. When at last I near the shore, and the fearful breakers roar, twixt me and the peaceful rest, then, while leaning on thy breast, may I hear thee say to me, Fear not, I will pilot thee. Father, we thank you for all that you provide. Truly nothing is ours. We're not our own. All things are yours. Help us, Father, to seek you first. 
to use our material blessings to serve and glorify you and thy son, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Help us to be content and not desire so much in the ways of this world. Help us to give knowing that we've been greatly prospered, even though we sometimes cannot see it. May we be right and acceptable in our giving. Bless this gift. May it prosper for thy will and thy glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We shall assemble on the mountain. We shall assemble at the throne. With humble hearts into his presence. We bring an offering of song. Glory and honor and dominion. song of the redeemed. We shall assemble on the mountain. We shall assemble at the throne with humble hearts into his presence. We bring an offering of song. Glory and honor and dominion, and honor and dominion unto the Lamb, unto the King, unto the Lamb, unto the King. Oh, Alleluia, Alleluia. We sing the song of the redeemed. Our Father in heaven, thank you for being our Father and creating us as your children. We pray that our worship has been acceptable to you. In the name of Christ we pray, amen.